Welcome back. I hope those of you who had time off had a relaxing break and are ready and refreshed for the new term. In this message, I'll be providing a few updates and would like to talk to you about the importance of integrity across our department. I would like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land, seas and waterways across Queensland, and I extend my respects to elders past and present. Now I'd like to make special mention of those staff who rolled up their sleeves and contributed to the flood recovery efforts. And I'd also like to acknowledge the determination shown by those who work tirelessly in keeping schools open to the end of term one, despite escalating COVID cases. Our school communities have certainly faced numerous challenges and I admire the resilience and community spirit shown. Thank you to all who stepped up and helped to play our part in keeping Queensland moving and learning. Amidst all that activity, it has been deeply rewarding to see firsthand other agencies working with our department and the positive initiatives achieved as a result. Our department is not an isolated island. We are all part of a broader system. So looking for opportunities to benefit Queensland and all citizens is vitally important. Last month, I visited Jacaranda Place, an inspiring centre that provides specialist care and treatment for young people with severe and complex mental health conditions. Despite the challenges these young people face, they are able to continue their education thanks to the collaborative efforts between education and health staff. I also attended the Queensland Workforce Summit, which explored strategies to address workforce shortages, one workshop, which included our Education Minister, highlighted the successful partnerships between schools and industry. There are other exciting opportunities playing out in our commitment to upgrade bandwidth across the state. Closing the digital divide for our schools and students and creating greater equity of access is very important. This is not simply about getting information quickly. The real benefit lies in now capitalising on all that we have learned about students learning remotely. Watch this space as Queensland moves to build on this opportunity that's right on our doorstep. I'd also like to mention the consultative work underway in lifting educational outcomes for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples. Next week I'm putting out a special video message highlighting these initiatives. Now a theme I would like to focus on is integrity. Integrity is central to all that we do. And I ask you, what does integrity mean to you? And how does that translate into your workplace behavior? What would someone say about how you demonstrate integrity? To ensure an ethical workplace, the department has a range of policies and processes in place to support you. The department's integrity plan reflects our zero tolerance approach to fraud and corruption. Now that might sound a bit hard hitting, but these things often start small through things like accepting a gift without declaring it, not following the correct process in selecting staff, workplace cultures based on fear, where people feel they cannot talk about their concerns. I know many of you are familiar with aspects of our integrity work, but I'd like to recap on some of the key components. We have introduced rigorous mechanisms to ensure that recruitment, selection, an appointment to executive positions and senior principal positions are made impartially, meritoriously and in accordance with best practice. Our next focus area is to actively encourage a culture of speaking up. Reporting wrongdoing is everyone's obligation and we have introduced an online form so you can lodge a complaint anonymously. And next, there's corporate card reform, which includes strength and controls such as mandatory requirements for corporate card and procurement training prior to receiving a card, along with an independent officer review of all corporate card transactions. We have introduced a more robust gifts and benefits procedure. And finally, we are raising awareness of what constitutes a conflict of interest. As departmental employees, we are entrusted by the government and the community to work on their behalf and in the public interest. The Queensland Code of Conduct helps us to understand how we put the principles and values into practice. I know the majority of our staff do the right thing, but it's important we continue to reinforce our department's core values 
and commitment to working with integrity. Focusing on integrity in all senses of the word is not a distraction from our core business of teaching, leading industrial relations, developing racing policy, or leading people. Acting with integrity is our core business. So I invite all of you to reflect on what integrity means to you. Talk about it with your colleagues. Be familiar with our policy and procedures. And remember, the behaviour we walk past is the standard we are prepared to accept. Call out things that don't look right to you. Finally, for those of you in our state schools, I wish you well for term two. Think about how you can bring the very best to our students, how you can broaden their horizons and life opportunities. And to everyone, thanks again for your efforts. Each one of you plays an important part in supporting Queenslanders to be educated, safe, and at times, entertained.